Hey guys, it's Bob, that's Scottish Drummer. I hope you're all doing well. And today we've got a video which is an interface shootout between the Focusrite Claret 8 Pre USB and the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40, which is a Firewire connection. If any of you out there are old enough to remember that connection. <laughs> this isn't so much of um, a shootout between the interfaces since you can't actually buy the Sapphire anymore. Well, not new, you could buy it used of course. So it's just more of an interesting comparison. I've got both of these interfaces sitting here. I'm using the Sapphire to expand my Claret so that I have 16 available inputs. I made another video on that, which I'll leave in the description below if you guys wanna check that one out. So today we're gonna to be comparing the preamps on both of these interfaces. It's gonna be nice to have a straight comparison where we're gonna have the mic set up exactly the same. It's gonna be the same microphones uh, and I'm gonna play the drums exactly the same each time or as close to exactly as I can get. Now, the Claret does have this air functionality, which emulates the older Focusrite ISA transformer-based preamps. So we're gonna do three tests. Uh, the Claret's gonna be twice, one with the air function on, one with it off, and the Sapphire doesn't have any extra features, so that's just gonna be how it sounds. Now, what Focusrite say about this air function is that it adds increased clarity and definition in the all-important mid-frequency range. So I'm assuming this isn't gonna sound great on the kick, maybe the floor tom, but it should sound good pretty much everywhere else. But for today's test, I'm gonna put the air function on every channel. So all eight microphones are gonna have the air function, even the kick, just so we can see what that sounds like. And that leads us on to what mics I'm gonna be using today. Mostly it's gonna be from my Earthworks DK7 set. So we're gonna have the SR20LS on the kick, and that's also with a kick pad in the signal chain. We're gonna have a DM20 on snare top and snare bottom, as well as a rack tom and a floor tom. We've got two SR25s as a space pair on the overheads. You can just see them up above me here. And to take up the eighth input, I'm gonna be using my Audio-Technica 2050 as a room mic. Recently, I've been messing about with this mic in the figure eight polar pattern with the null pointed towards the drum kit so that we're picking up a lot more of the room sound. So that's how I'm gonna have that set up today. So, let's get everything set up. I'll get behind the kit and we'll listen to some examples.
So there we have it guys. That's today's test done. What I would really like for you to do right now is pause this video and tell me in the comments below, what did you think? Did you have a favorite? Do you think there was a big difference? And then I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my thoughts when you come back. Now, in my opinion, the Claret does sound better, especially with that air feature turned on. But without the air feature turned on, there's not as much of a difference between these interfaces as I thought there was gonna be. Which just goes to show that the Sapphire Pro 40 is still a great interface today. Now, the signal coming from these Earthworks mics is pretty hot. So I barely had to touch the gain on both of these interfaces. And the signal was even a little too hot on the Sapphire, on the Rack Tom and the Floor Tom. And even the snare actually. So with the Claret, you are getting that extra headroom. Now, looking at that air feature on the Claret, like I mentioned at the start of this video, it didn't actually improve the sound of the kick or the floor tom. I hope you agree with me there that it actually sounded noticeably worse. It's, uh, it took some of that low end out, even though it's mid frequencies. Um, it sounds better without that. So I'm definitely gonna keep using this without the air enabled on the kick and the floor tom. I did actually enjoy it on the rack tom. I was back and forth for a while when I was listening to this. I wasn't sure if I did like it, it's pretty close, so again, it's up to your like personal opinion here, which one you like. But I do think there was a noticeable improvement in the snare, the overheads, even the hi-hat. I didn't have a dedicated hi-hat mic today, but it just sounded so much clearer in the overheads with that air function turned on. And even the room mic also changed a lot. I guess it depends what sound you're going for, but I did like the sound with the air function on. So as always, there'll be a link in the description below where you can download the files from my session today. Uh, all the files were 44.1 uh, 24 bit WAV files so that you can have a listen uh, without any compression. I don't know how much YouTube does to these videos, but it is just nicer to have the original audio files. So let me know what you think of today's comparison and if anyone out there is still rocking the Sapphire Pro 40 like me. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.